556 in service, starting mileage 6,587. 6,587. Officers Perkins and Good. Check 56, 609 p.m. Starting night watch. This is Don, as for reporting any in service on the night watch. You're going to ride with us tonight. Just where, your guess is as good as mine. But just remember one thing. The people you hear are not actors. This is it. This is real. This is Night Watch. Night Watch. The actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors. There is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch. Presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California. W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. We switch you now to car 56 on patrol and your police recorder, Don Reed. that someone has been shot or injured. In a matter of seconds, we'll be on the scene. No way of telling what we're going into. The uniform car will be coming in from the north. We're swinging in from the south. Traffic is light tonight. Gives us an opportunity to check the incoming cars. An outside chance, but there's always the possibility to observe a fast moving car which might be connected with a holdup. One more block to go. It's uh, it's the liquor store on the corner. We're wheeling into the curb. Heading into the store. The motor officer just rolled up. Bill heard. Man lying on the counter. Blood flowing from a head wound. Broken bottles. Smell of beer and whiskey. I got an ambulance coming Hey, you arrived? I don't know if you got that. Victim has been hit over the head with a hammer. I wouldn't let him go. See, I had to fight him. He finally ran out. He went up Culver Boulevard rock running. Yeah, yeah. This man about 40, 40, 45. Uh, sort of grayish brown hair and uh, sort of blue clothes, blue suit on, light blue, and uh, very extremely nervous. Uh, he ran up the street. Light blue suit? Yeah. I... Glasses or a hat or anything? No, nothing. Which way? Kind of a gun? Uh, no gun. He hit me. He took my, I turned my back and he hit me over there with a hammer. He was going to hit me again and I started fighting him and wrestled him. That's not, that's not your hammer. How tall is he? He's about 5'10. 5'10? Gray brown hair. 5'10, how old was he weigh? He weighed about 160 or 70. Okay. He went right up this way. Now about 45 years of age. In car? On foot. On foot. Uh, Perkins is putting it out on the air right now. Motor officer is taking off to cover the area. Suspect is possibly on foot. District uniform car coming in. They go. He went east on uh, Culver running by himself, one man, white male American, 45 years, uh, gray brown hair, light blue suit, five foot ten, 160 pounds. We have the hammer in here. It's not a not a arm robbery. It's 211 slugging. Over to our car to radio information. Five six to all units. The description on this 211 slugging. Male white American, 45 years of age, wearing a light blue suit, gray-brown hair, 
while the sergeant's sending that description out over the air to our other units in the field, let's get back into the liquor store here and uh, check out the man who has been injured. Cameron of the district uniform car talking to the victim. Anything around here? He touched the register and wiped everything he touched. Except the hammer. I wouldn't let it go. And he says, I want your money. I said, I haven't got any. He says, I want it. So to pacify him, I said, well, let's get it on the register. And I kept holding on to the hammer, and so did he. So he came over this far, and he says, open the register. I said, oh, no, I'm not letting go of this. So I said, press the blue button. So he pressed the blue button, and uh, the register opened. He grabbed whatever was in there. And, uh, he, and so he grabbed, so with his other hand, so with his other hand, he uh, started wiping it out with a handkerchief. And... Uh, you know, I was getting kind of weak from the blow, so I, I said, I started shouting to him, get out of here, get out of here. So finally he got scared and he ran out. I, I ran out, sort of dizzy-like, and I said, I better get, call a cop. So I did, and that was it. And, and you'll uh, know him again when you see him. Oh, yes, I saw him before. He's been around here, I'm sure. He's been around here, sir? Yes, he's been around here. Because, you see, I recognize, I said hello, and, I, and he says, uh, I said, can I help him? He says, oh. How much, how much money did you get? He must have taken about... 10, 15, 20, 30. It took about $30. Did you get No, he couldn't even touch me. I was holding on to the hammer it was the minute he was since he hit me. Oh, you're holding on to the hatchet. See, what happened was he asked me to get the beer, and I, like a fool, turned my back and started reaching for the thing. I just knew it was coming, and pow, he hit me with everything. I fell to the floor, and I was surprised I woke up. So I turned around. And there he is. He leaps down on top of me and starts swinging. I grabbed the, his arm, then I grabbed the hammer, and we started going around. We smashed the beer. I kicked him. So we both wrestled over here, and he opened this, asked me how to open this, and that was it. Then I scared him by saying, you better get out of here before someone comes in. And he left. But I still held on the hammer. I think his uh, prints will be on there, Sergeant. I don't think so, Don. It's a pretty rough hammer. It's a little ball peen hammer. He got hit over the head. Uh, the blunt end of it. Uh, we'll take it out and try it anyway for prints. Well, let's, let's the Pope. That sounds like the ambulance right now. Let's look for our prints on that. Sounds like them rolling in now. Here they are. Here comes the ambulance rolling in. <coughs> Attendants coming in the store with the first aid kit. Lucky didn't kill me. He had everything. Examining the wound. Chance to hit me as hard as he wanted to. Is it all right? Is it? Yes. Wow. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Machado was over here now to take charge. Sergeant Perkins is bringing him up to date. Lieutenant Olson, we notified that they have not had you yet. Uh, the uh, fellow that got hit here said that this man wiped all of his fingerprints off of everything he touched in here except for the hammer. Yes. Mm-hmm. The hammer's on down at the station. Right. And we can preserve that down there for Lieutenant Olson. Right. Well, we'll get a teletype out. Right. Let's see if we he got about, uh, what was it? Uh, said $30. Uh, $30 in cash. $30, $30 in cash. Yeah. Right. Has Lieutenant Tom notified you? Not yet, not yet. Okay. Fine. Right. Right on. We'll handle it from here and let the card make the rest of the report. Let's get back to the car. We have the weapon with us. The hammer used by the suspect to slug his victim. It's tied to a string so as not to smudge any of the prints. So, let's get back to police headquarters and the fingerprint bureau. is getting out an APB, an all-points bulletin on the suspect. Meanwhile, we're heading for the fingerprint bureau. See if there's anything turned up on the weapon yet. Lieutenant Olson and uh, Officer Cameron are kneeling down on the floor, dusting the hammer. Let's see if they've done any good. Hi, Lieutenant. Hello, Don. How are you? Swell. Good. Any uh, chance of any prints? Well, I believe we have some partial prints here, at least. Mm. Golly, that looks like a good one up high. Well, all that depends on what we can find when we left it. Mm. Stuff from getting it off of wood isn't too satisfactory, but mm-hmm. it's a pretty good finish on this handle. It's practically new. Mm-hmm. I noticed that... Um, 
That's a black powder you're putting on there. What type of powder is that, Lieutenant? Well, it's specially prepared fingerprint powder uh-huh. made out of blank black. And, oh, you get a lot of different things in it. Rosin, anything that makes it adhere to the fluid. It takes on a sort of a grayish color now. Will you photograph? And I noticed there's uh, several smudges coming out here and there. Uh, will you photograph that and uh, the result will be a fingerprint? That's right. And, of course, we lift it and preserve it in that manner. We take it off of the article. Well, so far we have the suspect down to a local. The victim is a holdup. It says that he's seen the victim at least three times in the last six months. In the area? In the area and in the store. Hmm. All connections with him have been in the store. Mm Mm-hmm. The uh, victim, Don, uh, has he gone home or is he back at work? Uh, he's been taken to the hospital, Lieutenant. The hammer certainly has prints on it. I don't. Uh, we'll have to check them against the victim. If he was wrestling for this hammer, his prints may be the ones that come out good on here. However, we'll we'll be able to tell as soon as we get the victim's prints. Yeah. This uh, string that was tied on that hammer to pick it up and to bring it in here was uh, one of the smartest things that the investigating officer could do. Ordinarily, you see, uh, or at least in fiction, uh, the detective will pick an article up that he's bringing into the eye bureau, uh, into the crime lab. He'll pick it up in a handkerchief or a piece of paper and that definitely ruins or stands a good chance of ruining the print. But the way this was prepared, tying a string around so that it would balance and he carried it in, uh, having, not having touched it at all, I'm satisfied that I have the prints of either the suspect or the victim because they wrestle for that hammer. Well, I can say is the bulk of it, I hope, it's, <laughs> is our boy. That's right, I hope so. Well, I want to head on down, so thanks a million, Lieutenant. Okay. See you later. Bye. Let's get back to Sergeant Perkins' office, see what's doing. Check out the marijuana. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a run over there. I know where the address is. Okay, I'll leave a report on your desk. Okay, right. Hi. Hi, Don. Well, we've done about all we can on that 211. Lieutenant Collins just called and gave us another assignment. Yeah, what's that? Well, he got a report back from a crime lab about some leaves found in a man's jacket. Seems it turned out to be marijuana. You are listening to Night Watch and following the activities of a detective unit on its tour of duty. The people and sounds you are hearing are real and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. And now we switch you back to car 5-6 on patrol and to police recorder Don Reed. In a moment, we'll be at the location where we are to interrogate the owner of a small dry cleaning establishment. This is the information we have to go on. A man entered this store last week and left a jacket to be cleaned. An unusual type leaf was found in the pocket which aroused the suspicion of the store proprietor. Of course, this was only a supposition on the owner's part until he notified the detective bureau and the samples were sent to the crime lab for analysis. Results? The leaves found were definitely marijuana. Well, here we are. job now. Locate the owner of the jacket in which the narcotics were found. Inside the store. I'm uh, Sergeant Perkins. Identification. Do you have some information? Now, as to any further identification of who, what, or where, we're going to have to leave that part unsaid. Lieutenant, I found a loaf of jacket in the pocket. It was in the pocket. 
We sent it down to the Los Angeles County Crime Lab, and uh, there was sufficient leaf on this on these twigs mm -hmm. to show that it was marijuana. When we went across stems, it indicates usually one of two things: either that the person that has the stems is um, has access to the plant itself growing someplace, or that he has had sufficient quantity that he has refined or used the leaf and didn't bother to get rid of the stem. They don't smoke the stem, they use the leaf of the seed. Uh, it usually indicates a pretty big deal. It's not just an average run-of-the-mill marijuana smoker. Now, whether or not the boy is, is smoking or pushing or has access to it, that's something we've got to find out. We have run into some narcotics locally, which uh, some young people are involved in, and it may tie into it. Well, if I can help anyway, I will. All right, Spell. Thanks, Spell. Right. We appreciate your cooperation. We know where he works, so we're going to go over there and have a little talk with him. Thanks very much. Good night. This, um, this fellow works around here somewhere, doesn't he? Yeah, he works at the gas station right around the corner down here. Yeah. We'll uh, swing around and back and see if this car is there. If it is, then we'll go in and talk to him. Yeah. This is it right over here. Yeah. Let's see. Is that the license number? Yeah, that's his car back there. Let's uh, go shake the car down. It's behind the building there. He can't see us. Yeah. Okay. See right here? There's one there? Yeah. There's one there? Yeah. That means he's been blasting here in the car, doesn't it? That's right. Mm -hmm. Look. See, there's, there's one here and one here. Mm -hmm. There's two more there, right at the crack of the door. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take these two for evidence. We're going to leave these two in here. Right. So when we get the boy, we're going to show him that we found some seeds in the car. Right. Got it? Check. Okay. Let's go around and have a little talk with this fellow. Right. It's a cat. What is that? It's a cat. Is that what it is? He knows we're coming now anyway. Boy, gosh, it jumped like I was shot. I'll get around the building here now. Service station is directly ahead. Move across the lot now to where the suspect is working. You the fellow that owns the car out there in back? Yeah. We're police officers. Uh, step inside. We don't want to talk to you. Moving into the building. The suspect appears a little nervous. Short, heavy build. Hands covered with grease. He's wiping them off in a rag. Reaching for a cigarette. Ready? Black sedan? You drive it tonight? Huh? You're the one that drives it? Huh? No one else drives it, huh? See those two little seeds? Yeah. They came out of your car tonight. There's more of them still in the car. That's marijuana. You want to start telling us about it, or shall we tell you what we know? Well, sir, I haven't had anything to do with it. You I used to run around with fellas that have, but I haven't myself. Because I haven't gotten in any trouble at all. I'm not saying you got any trouble. I'm telling you, you had narcotics. You use them. You blast. Oh, sir. Now there's marijuana twigs in your coat pocket. These marijuana seeds in your car. There's more of them in there. Take you over and show them in your car. 
Yeah. What about them? Well, sir, they was, don't belong to me. Where'd they come from? Well, I don't know. There might have been somebody got in my car or something. There might have been. But there wasn't. Then take that car of yours and turn it over to the state. Then find it on, on the narcotics violation. The state will seize it. Well, sir, those seeds, I haven't the faintest idea how they've been in there. I used to do, uh, do that, but that has, it's been about four or five months since I have. When's the last time you blasted? About then. What made you stop? I just have decided that it's not doing me any good at all. Where did you get your stuff from? Who? Well, when I used to, when I used to do it, we used to just go down to Mexico and get it. What about you, Mexico? Tijuana. Who's we? Oh, me and anybody else that could go. You blast in your car? We did it a couple of times. Front or back seat? The front seat, I think. Well, we found seats in the front and back. Well, I don't know how they got in the back seat. But... Well, you're in a spot right now. When you go down to Mexico and get the stuff, what kind of stuff do you get? Get it with twigs in it? Mm. What do you pay for it? Fifteen dollars or so. How many roaches do you make out of stuff you buy? I don't know. I don't believe you didn't say the last time you blasted. Those seeds there are too fresh for that. Well, somebody else was dropping in my car. But don't you think it's a little un unusual for us to, uh, if you haven't blasted in the last three or four months, that... Uh, all of a sudden, we get uh, an investigation on it. We start going. We find uh, marijuana in your car, marijuana in your jacket pocket. Well, sir, I don't know why, why they were investigating me. I mean, the narcotics. Happens to be against the law. I was, sir. I'm not anymore. How often did you blast? Just on the weekend, Jason. How many did you blast at a time? Couple. You know, the state, of, the state of California will seize any car which narcotics have been transported in. Because all they need is one little seed. We just brought two in to show it to you. We go back and probably get about 30 or 40 out of that car by the time we get through. That's a lot of cigarettes, a lot of roaches. I'll admit it. And you're going to be booked on a possession charge. Possession of narcotics. Get your coat on. Let's go on down to the station. Here at uh, police headquarters, the officers are busy making out reports. So um, let's go on into the detention room and talk for a moment with the young suspect that was picked up a short while ago. Glancing through the bars, his father is talking with him. Apparently they're through. They're just getting up. Let's go on in. I'd like to uh, ask you a few questions about your arrest. Would you like to discuss it? Yes, I would. Let's uh, come right to the point. Why did you start smoking marijuana? Well, I think it just... Uh, sometimes you feel, you know, there's not much to do. And uh, it doesn't, doesn't seem to do much for you. And uh, I don't know, I guess it was just something to do. Mm -hmm. How does smoking one of these marijuana cigarettes affect you? Well, it just uh, kind of shuts things out from you. So it just has sort of a, a deadening effect. It doesn't, uh, things don't, aren't as sharp or as clear as they usually are. Did you uh, try to use this as a means of escape from everyday problems? Well, I don't think that was the reason I started. I was, uh, I guess I got running around with the wrong friends and... Uh, mm -hmm. It was just everybody seemed like that was doing it. Okay. I want to talk with your father for a moment. Uh, sir, in just a few moments, this young fellow will be transferred down to juvenile hall where he'll be held pending court action. How do you think he got started smoking marijuana? Curiosity, probably. Mm -hmm. And if curiosity was what led youngsters in the teenage group to try marijuana... Why doesn't that same curiosity take them to juvenile hall? 
to see some of the results. I just hope maybe they, they'll try that rather than the marijuana. Thanks very much. What you have just heard is real, recorded as it actually occurred on The Night Watch. And now back to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. The suspect in the robbery and assault case tonight is still at large. Our detective bureau is continuing the search, and every police department has been alerted to watch for a suspect answering his description. When this suspect is taken into custody, he will be charged with 211 Penal Code, the penalty of which is not less than five years. In the final case, where a young man was charged with violation of the State Narcotics Act, the subject was booked on Section 11502 of the Health and Safety Code. Even more important than the arrest of this suspect was his personal realization that further contact with marijuana could lead to his possible addiction of an even more dangerous narcotic such as heroin and ruin his entire life. Night watch is the result of many grueling hours of work and exposure to considerable danger to take you to the scene of action. But we are doing so for a purpose. You are hearing for the first time the decisions and problems your law enforcement officers must face in the field. If we succeed in bringing this message to just a few, then we are accomplishing our purpose in presenting Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have just heard on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch is brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, and is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hedlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by police recorder Don Reed.